Hey, what's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. I hope all is well with you today. Now, have you ever wondered how to use animations inside of your iOS applications? Or have you ever struggled with animations inside of the Swift programming language? Well, in today's video, I'm gonna go over how to use something called a CA basic animation class that allows us to animate things very nicely and very easily inside of our iOS apps. All right, so before we begin today's coding session, let me give you a rather quick demo as to what we're gonna be working on in today's video here. So I have the iOS 10, iPhone 10 simulator on the right side setup, and I'm going to click on this screen and this is going to initiate a file download of a five megabyte file from the internet. So this is a circular progress bar that allows us to track the amount of bytes that we've downloaded so far of that five megabyte file. And down in the center right here, it kind of tells us how far along our download has gone for it. So pretty nice stuff. And we also have a nice pulsing animation that's kind of in the background there. It's a little subtle. It definitely adds a nice touch to your application if you wanted to add something in like this. Okay, so what's nice about learning how to build out something like this is that it allows you to use a very similar technique to create three charts that kind of look like this over here. So if I click on the screen, it animates all of these charts to 50%, 100%, and 33% at the very bottom. So imagine you're building out some kind of application that monitors how many calories you've eaten for the day, right? You can have 50% up here and maybe you are also tracking how many steps you've taken for the day. If you are at 100%, then you can use the middle chart like that. Okay, so in today's video, we're gonna look at how to build out these two features using a CA shape layer class, as well as a CA basic animation class. And luckily for us, these two classes are very easy to work with. So let's take a look at the implementation inside of Xcode right now. All right, so let me take you into my brand new single view application project right here inside of Xcode. And I'm going to run my little bit of code here to show you a blank white screen inside of the iPhone 10 simulator, and that's exactly what we get. So a pretty good start here, and I'm going to start by drawing a circle into my screen here. So let's start by drawing a circle somehow. And how are we going to do this is by using something called a CA shape layer. So let's say let shape layer equals CA shape layer like that, and we will use a blank empty constructor. So eventually down here, I'm going to add it into the view controllers view, which is this white screen over here with view.layer.addSubLayer of this shape layer from above, okay? So if you run your code right now, your simulator is not going to render anything because the shape layer hasn't been properly set up yet. So you get this white screen. And the first bit of information that you need to give this shape layer is the path in which it needs to kind of draw itself. So you can say shape layer dot path, it needs to equal to something. So I'm going to declare this path above with let circular path equals something. And I'm going to use a UI Bezier path. Hopefully that's how you pronounce this word. And let's use the constructor with center, radius, angle, end angle, and clockwise. So I'm going to specify a clockwise equals to true. And you see this application over here, if I click on it, it animates clockwise in that circular direction. Okay, so that's what that parameter allows us to do. And the center over here, I'm going to just draw inside of the views center. So you can, you know, do something like this. Let center equals the view center and use this center for the first parameter. And the radius, I'll just use a kind of a hard coded value of 100. The start angle is going to be zero. And the end angle is something that you'll have to learn for today's lesson. And basically for circles, we have zero starting from right here. And if you draw two pi, you'll get all the way around. And if you just draw one pi, you'll get to 180 degrees. So let me show you what that looks like with CG float like that and dot pi. Okay. So now with our circular path defined, we can specify that for our shape layer path over here. And one the last thing you have to do is to add CG path to the end of your circular path. And that's because this path over here, this parameter expects a CG path like so. All right, so if you render out your circle, you actually get half a circle and that's because like I was mentioning over here, you need two pi to get all the way around to get a complete pi. 
pi, or complete circle rather. So running our application now, we get a full black circle. All right, so really good stuff there. And if you don't fully understand the pi logic here, make sure to kind of study up on trigonometry. I think that's where we learn these concepts here. Okay, so now what I want to move on to is how we can add this stroke path or this stroke highlight onto our circle. And the way I'm going to do that is to go back into the code here. And let's see, what do I want to add onto shape layer here? Is something called a stroke color. So color, and you can specify whatever you want here, as long as you specify the CG color, because stroke color is a CG color. All right, the next thing you need to do is to say shape layer dot line width, I think, and I'm going to specify 10, and this is going to stroke the circle with a line that is 10 pixels in width, and that's what you get right there. Okay, so being able to draw our circle is pretty good, but what's even better is to be able to animate our circular stroke kind of around the circle like that. And the way I'm going to do that is to add a tab gesture onto the view controller's view so that I can execute some code, and I'll do that down below with view. Let's see, add gesture recognizer of UI tab gesture, and let's construct this with a target of self. The action will be pound selector, and let's say handle tap as our custom function, which I'll define down here with function handle tap, and just hit enter like that. Now inside of Swift 4, you have to specify these selector functions with objective C to get it to work. And while we're here, we'll just add a private to it, and everything should be okay. So let me say print, you know, attempting to animate stroke like that and run our application right now. So I always execute these print statements just to make sure my code is working the correct way. So tap, 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 we get these console print statements down below, okay? So now what I want to do is actually execute this animation like that. So how I'm going to do that is to use something called a basic animation. So let basic animation equals see a basic animation. And this comes with a constructor that allows us to use something called a key path here. So what exactly is the key path? Well, it is the thing that we actually want to animate on this shape layer. So there's something on this shape layer called stroke n. So let me just type it out here, dot stroke n. I'm going to specify that equal to zero. And let me just comment out this code. And if you run your application now, you'll see that the stroke is now gone. So all we have is that black circle. And what I'm going to do is use this animation at the bottom. So I'll specify the key path to be stroke n. That's not how that looks like. So stroke n. And down below, you can say basic animation dot two value equals to one. Okay, so that's how you animate this stroke n property. And finally, you just have to add this animation onto this shape layer over here. But because we are in a different function, we don't have access to the shape layer anymore. So what I'm going to do is to cut this line right here and just move it to the top of the class so that we can access it as a local property. Okay, so down below inside of the handle tab, let's just say shape layer and add. And right here we have add animation for some kind of string. So this animation is that over there, the basic animation for the key you can just specify some kind of custom string. So I'm gonna say you're so basic and just leave it as that and run our code right now. And hopefully the animation of our stroke end will draw our stroke in a circular fashion like that. So you kind of see it for a very, very split quick second. And the way that you would kind of see that a little bit better is to change the animation duration. So basic animation dot duration equals two seconds perhaps, and let me run the code now. So I don't really exactly know what the default value for duration is, but I think it's either 0.5 seconds or one second or something, so click on that. You see the animation very, very clearly. Now at the very end of the animation, you want the stroke to kind of stay, and let me show you how to do that with basic animation dot, I think it's fill mode equals uh, fill mode forwards like that, and then basic animation dot remove on completion equals to false, like so. 
So let me run that right now. And basically this property right here tells the animation to not remove the entire, I guess, stroke end equal to one. So it stays there. And I'm not exactly sure what this does, but you need this line in order for the animation to stay at the very end. Okay, so now that you have your animation set up, it's time to customize a couple of the different properties of this stroke here. And the first thing I want to modify is the start point in which this stroke is kind of beginning at. So I wanted to start at the 12 o'clock position instead, which is all the way up at the top, instead of the three o'clock position, okay? So I'm gonna go back into the view to load function and inside of here, we have to modify the start angle. And the way to get it to start at 12 o'clock is to bring it back a couple of degrees. So I'm going to say, let's see, negative CG float dot pi divided by two and just run my application again. So pi, if you remember correctly, it's 180 degrees. So we're just going to bring it back 90 degrees to the top right there. And that's what we get. So one minor detail about how this line is kind of drawn at the beginning and end is that you see it's kind of this hard rectangular shape. Let me just expand this. It's kind of this hard line, right? And inside of the finished application, this is a much nicer kind of beginning and end point of your line. So let me show you how to do that by going back to the shape layer right here. So shape layer. And then I believe it's called line cap. And this is a C around, C, C A line cap round like that. And you should be able to get a nicer stroke inside of your circle. So hopefully that works. And we will see what happens when the application loads up. Click on there. You see it's a nicer round soft end to your line. So that's pretty good. And one thing that you do want to know how to figure out how to do is to remove this black center in the middle. And so the way you would do that is to go back to the shape layer one more time and just somewhere over here, you want to say fill color. I think you can specify this as UI color dot clear. And again, make sure you use the CG color instead of just regular old color. So this gives you UI color, this gives you CG color, and this is what it's expecting. So you click on that now, you see just the stroke without the fill in the center. All right, so everything with our application works perfectly so far. However, there is one more thing that you can add to it just to make it a little bit better. And that is this circular track layer that is right below the stroke. For example, the green, yellow, and red right here. And there's this little rim that the stroke actually animates around. So I'm going to drag this out of the way first and show you how that is done by just copying some code over here. So let's see what I want to copy. So I'm going to copy all of that and over, let's see, over here, I'm going to create my track layer. So copy and paste that. And let's just say let track layer equals C a track layer, not track layer, but shape layer. Construct it like that. Copy this, paste that in there, 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 and there. I don't think I need this circular path down here because I have it defined up here. So just hit the space right there and I should be good to go. And all I need to do is say view.layer.addSubLayer of this track layer first. And I need to also specify some kind of stroke color that is different from this red. So let's just use light gray for now. And I should be okay. So I don't think I need the line cap, but let's just run our code first to see what it looks like. And I should have a circular gray layer right here. And the moment I click on it, you see that the red kind of animates right over that. All right, that's gonna be it for today's video on how we can execute a circular animation using a CA shape layer and also a CA basic animation class. Now, I hope you found today's video helpful. If you're interested in more Swift development lessons, you can check out the Instagram Firebase course down below. Finally, make sure to leave a thumbs up for the video if you enjoyed it, and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. That's gonna be it for me today. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye, everyone.